This is Pre-Calculus 12, Chapter 7.2. We're going to be solving trigonometric equations algebraically. And here's a little review. And we're doing it because many students make algebra errors in this chapter. Anytime we leave out the math operator, it is implied that we are multiplying with one exception, mixed fractions. 2 sine theta means 2 times sine theta. 2 and a quarter means 2 plus 1 quarter. So this is not 2 times a quarter. 2 brackets 1 quarter means 2 times 1 quarter. Okay, so this is a mixed fraction. It's the only time we don't actually mean multiply. And here's some more rules. f of x equals x squared. And in this case, 2 f of x does not equal f of 2 times x in general. There's some rare cases where this is true, but in general, it's not true. Let's substitute to see why. 2 and we're substituting this whole thing with brackets, x squared does not equal, and we're substituting 2x for x, 2x squared. So we have 2x squared does not equal 4x squared. So when we're doing trig, we see a similar thing, sine 2 theta, and this does not equal, in general, sine to theta. This is a vertical stretch of two. This is a horizontal compression of one half. So if we look at the two graphs, this one is two sine theta. We look at this one, this is sine two theta. And we can see that it's horizontally compressed. This one is vertically stretched. And what do we do with fractions in fractions? Okay, you have to deal with the denominator. 2, and we need a common denominator here. So this is 3 over 3 minus 1 third plus. And these two we can just add. So we have 5 over 4. Simplify this. 2, that's 2 over 3. And we still have 5 over 4 equals 2, and now we're dividing by a fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal. 3 over 2, and we still have 5 over 4. We can cancel the 2's out, so this is just 3 plus 5 over 4. We need to add these two together, so we need a common denominator, so we multiply the 3 by 4 over 4, we get 12 over 4, plus 5 over 4, and our answer is 17 over 4. It's quite a lot of work when you have fractions in the denominator. And we're working with trig, so you won't have the luxury of working with numbers. You're going to have to do this all algebraically. So if we had this in terms of variables, we would have a. We need to multiply this by b over b, so 1 over b plus c over 1 plus b. Can't do anything with this side yet. Let's change the color of this. That's what we're changing. And now we can simplify this. We have b minus 1. We factor a b out of the divisor, and we still have c over 1 plus b. And now that we're dividing by a fraction, so we multiply by the reciprocal. We have a b over b minus 1, and we still have c over b plus 1. Now we need a common denominator. We have b minus 1, b plus 1. This one needs to be multiplied by b plus 1 over b plus 1. b 
b minus 1 plus c over b plus 1. And this gets multiplied by the b minus 1. And now we expand everything. a, b, b plus a, b plus c, b minus c. So we're expanding this times this, a, b times 1, c times b, c times negative 1. This is a difference of squares. And that's what we end up with. And since this is the same form as this, where we have a equal to 2, b equal to 3, c is equal to 5, and we have b again. Let's substitute 2 times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 5 times 3 minus 5, 3 squared minus 1, and this gives us 17 over 4 again. So when you're doing some complicated work, you can always substitute in a value and check your algebra. OK, so when we get higher degree trigonometric functions, we can treat the trig function as a variable. So we're going to substitute in a variable, solve it, and then replace the trig function at the end. Now for this problem, we don't have to. It's not that complicated, so we'll just leave it as a trig function cos squared x, treat it like a variable, so we need to isolate it. We need to divide both sides by 2. We need to take the square root. That means we have plus or minus 1 over root 2. And x equals the inverse cos of the absolute value of negative plus or minus 1 over root 2. And that's just 45 degrees. You might prefer to see this as 1 over root 2. Square root of 1 is 1, so we can take it out of the radical sign. That's 45 degrees. That means we have plus or minus cos. So we have this, but we have positive and we have negative. So we have all the quadrants. Since the reference ratio is plus or minus, we cover every quadrant. The difference between all the angles is all the same. Ninety degrees. So one general solution. That's 45 degrees plus 90 degrees N, N element Z. And if we want to talk about the principal answers, principal solutions, we have 45, 135, 225, and 315. So we saw this example in 7.1, but that was done graphically. This time we're doing it algebraically. Let's look at another example. 8 sine squared x minus 6 sine x plus 1 equals 0, and we're doing this in radians. This is complicated to look at, so let's substitute. We'll make y equal to sine x, and we have 8y squared minus 6y plus 1 equals 0. We want to factor this. We have 4y minus 1 and 2y minus 1, that equals 0. We check negative 1 times 2y is negative 2y, negative 1 times 4y is negative 4y. Add them together, we get negative 6y. We set this equal to 0, we find that y equals a quarter. We set this equal to 0, and we find that y equals 1 half. 
So make equation look simpler with substitution. Now we substitute it back. So we say sine x is equal to 1 quarter, sine x2. Let's make this x1. x2 equals 1 half. We notice that this is a special ratio. This is not a special ratio. So we have to go x1 equals inverse sine of 1 quarter. Now we're allowed to use the calculator. We do as much algebra as possible before we're using our calculator. This is 0.2526. Over here, x2 equals inverse sine 1 half. This is positive, so I don't really need to put absolute value around it x2 equals pi over 6. Notice this has equals. This is approximate. Now we need to use our chart. All students take calculus. Sine is positive, so we already have our quadrant 1 answer. And we need our quadrant 2 answer, because sine is positive in quadrant 2. And if we graph this, this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4. So we already have our x1, x2. This is roughly 3 over 6, so that's roughly a half. So a half is bigger than 0.25. So that's why we list x1 here, x2 here. So we'll do x4 first. This is 3.1415 minus 0.2526. Actually, this should be a little bit more accurate. This is 3.14159, so this is 6. So we have 2.8890. And x3, this one's easier pi minus pi over 6, and we get 5 pi over 6. We'll list our general solutions. The period is 2 pi over b, but b is just 1, so it's equal to 2 pi. So we have 0.2526 plus 2 pi n, we have pi over 6, plus 2 pi n. We have 5 pi over 6, plus 2 pi n, and we have 2.8890 plus 2 pi n, and n from the set of integers. Okay, it's always best to put this in increasing order. And we have four principal solutions as well. And that would be these guys. We can verify this by graphing. Never hurts to verify when you have time on a test. And as I previously mentioned, if we enter sine x squared, this means we square the x before taking the sine. So we're squaring the angle. When we write sine squared x, this means we square the ratio. We take the sine first and then square the ratio. And that's what we are doing in this function because it's sine squared. Okay, let's solve another problem. Let's use tangent this time. Again, we have tan squared. We have another tan here. Let's substitute y equals tan just to make it look easier. This time, well, we only have up to two solutions because tan only has one solution per period. And with sine, we had up to four solutions here. I didn't write it down. Up 
to four solutions because this is degree two and sine can have up to two solutions. Okay, back to tan. So we have two y squared equals three y minus one. So we bring everything over to one side, 2y squared minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. We factor this to y minus 1, y minus 1 equals 0. And we have y equal to, this set this equal to 0, solve, and we get y equals a half. Set this equal to 0, we get 1. Now we need to substitute back. Now we have tan x1 equals to 1 half. And over here we have tan x2 equal to 1. We note that this is a special ratio. This is not a special ratio, so we can use our calculator. Here it is a special ratio. You need to solve it exactly. So this one we'll do first, x2 equals pi over 4. If you're not used to it yet, this is 45 degrees. So x1 equals inverse tan of 1 half. And we can use our calculator now. x1 is approximately equal to 0.46. 3, 6. Okay, tangent only has one solution per period. Let's take a look at this. Pi over 4, that's 3 quarters. This is only about a half. So this comes first. So we write 0.4636 6 plus, and the period for tangent is pi. So we have pi n. There's no b, so our period is just pi over b. And we have pi over 4 plus pi n and element z. And we also have two principal solutions. And that's these two guys. Let's look at one more example. Well, what are you going to do with this? This is a degree two trigonometric function because we have one trig function times another trig function. It doesn't have to be the same trig function. So it's still degree two. Well, let's just factor. What's common between these two? It's sine x. So we pull sine x out, we get two cos x. And we pull sine out. And when I say pull a sine out, we're dividing by sine x, and we're left with 1. So we have two solutions, so we're going to number them. Sine x1 equals 0. And we have 2 cos x2 equal to negative 1. x1 equals 0. This is a special ratio. But if you plug it into your calculator, I'm sure you'll get 0. OK, over here, we need to divide both sides by 2. Cos x2 equals negative 1 half. x2 equals inverse. I'm going to put x2 prime. Inverse cos, negative 1 half. Absolute value, negative 1 half. And this is pi over 3. And we look at our chart. All students say calculus. Cosine is negative in 2 and 3. So we'll say x2 equals pi minus pi over 3. That gives us 2 pi over 3. In quadrant 3, we'll call it x3. Let's label this so we don't get confused. x1, x2, 
x3, and this is possibly x4. So x3 equals pi plus pi over 3, so we get 4 pi over 3. And the only other place where sine x equals 0 is over on this side. Remember, sir, so it's the y value we're looking at. So y is 0 here and y is 0 here. So we'll say x4 equals pi. So x1 and x4, they differ by pi. So it has one solution, one general solution. If you wanted to say that this was in quadrant 3 or quadrant 2, it makes no difference. Pi plus theta prime. You can use pi minus theta prime as well. It makes no difference because we have pi plus 0. And that's pi. So our general solutions, we have pi n. We have this is the first solution, this is the second solution, this is the third solution. 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And we have 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. n from a set of integers. Our principal solutions differ this time. We have 0, we have 2 pi over 3, we have pi, and we have 4 pi over 3. So in general, if we look at this, we look at the trig function, we look at the circle, we see that if it's at the maximum point, one solution. So maximum point, there's only one general solution. Similarly with the minimum point, okay? And we can see at the maximum point, we have sine, that's sir, the y equals 1, and negative 1. So those are the maximums. And if we look at cosine, we have 1 and negative 1. That's the maximum for cosine. So this is a phase shift for cosine. This is sine. And if we have sine or cosine equal to zeros, then we have only one general solution, but the period is pi over b. And sorry, I forget to fill it. The period for the maximum or minimum is 2 pi over b. And if we have tangent, we only have one general solution with a period of pi over b. There's no other options. Sine and cosine, we have more variation. So if it's not either of these two cases, if it's not on the center line, if it's not on the minimum or maximum, then we have two general solutions with period of 2 pi over b. And that completes this lesson.